Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 4th of September 2011. Well, the sun has certainly perked up over the last 24 hours, producing several large sea flares. And as I am recording this, there is an M flare underway. So we'll get to what's causing all the excitement in a minute, but first our trivia question. 16 years ago today, Harold Crotto, Robert Curl, and Richard Smalley announced a discovery that led to a Nobel Prize. And that discovery is associated with structures like the one shown in the background here. So the question is, what was that discovery? The answer will be given at the end. Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, the sun has got a bit more active. It has produced at least 12 C flares and one M3 flare which is currently underway. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what has been causing all the trouble. We have six officially numbered regions on the disk. and I'm pleased to say that Noah seems to have been paying attention to what we said yesterday uh, in that they numbered that region in the northwest, region 1286. I would point out, however, that many of the sea flares from yesterday that were attributed to region 1280, which disappeared overnight, is actually associated with region 1286. Yesterday, 1286 looked like a fairly healthy region, as you can see here. However, despite the foreshortening, today you can see that it's a much larger region with much bigger spots. So that indicates that it's been growing rapidly in the last 24 hours, which is usually a harbinger for flaring. We lost region 1279 overnight, but region 1277 is still there as a single large spot. And I don't see a lot of change from yesterday to today in that region. Region 1282, which looked so promising a couple of days ago, has continued to decay, particularly in the trailing part of the region. Region 1283 in the northeast looked quite impressive yesterday, and I think it's continued to grow today, particularly just above the leader spot. By contrast, region 1281 in the southeast uh, seems to have decayed over the last 24 hours, as you can see here, particularly in the trailer part of the region. The region that we discussed yesterday coming over the southeast limb was numbered 1287 overnight. It's difficult to tell whether this is growing or decaying while it's so close to the limb, so we'll have to wait for a day or two to see uh, how that turns out. So to summarize, solar activity has increased quite a bit. However, that increase is going to be temporary if it's all associated with region 1286, because that will be going over the west limb in the next day or two. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the movies from the sunspot and magnetic data of the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Choose your favorite region and watch its development first in the sunspot movie and then in the magnetic movie. But unfortunately, once again, the AIA instrument has large gaps in it. I suspect everybody at the contractor that runs that instrument has uh, taken a long holiday weekend off, which is rather disappointing. However, there is some interesting features that one can see even in these shortened movies. In this still frame, you can see there's a wonderful S-shaped filament just above region 1283. Now, if 1283 becomes more active, that filament could lift off and it's getting close to an area where it would be pointed at the Earth if that happens, so we could get a Earth-directed CME. There's another filament stretching from behind region 1283 to the northeast limb, and you can see the far part of that filament is trying to lift off. It's way up there above the limb. So let's take a look at the movies and see if you can capture some of that even in these shortened versions. The high temperature coronal image from the GOES SXI instrument shows a, just a hint of that uh, coronal hole in the southern hemisphere that will be affecting us over the next couple of days. Also in the northeast, there is still some evidence of a region coming over the northeast limb. If that's the top of the region that's two or three days behind the limb, then this is quite an extensive region that we can see it so early. In the SOHO coronagraph data, there seems to be coronal mass ejections popping off all over the place. However, the M flare off the northwest limb seems to have produced a fairly substantial coronal mass ejection. However, all the data isn't in as yet, so we'll have to wait till tomorrow to see the extent of it. The solar wind data shows that the temperatures remained relatively constant over the last 24 hours. The velocity increased to about 450 kilometers per second for a short while, but then fell back again, and the density has dropped significantly. This seems to be the signature of what's called a co-rotating interaction region, which is just a fancy word for some area of turbulence between a slow solar wind stream and a fast solar wind stream. 
so we should be expecting to move into the high-speed solar wind stream from that coronal hole in the next day or so. The high energy electron flux also shows some strange variations. The highest energies, the bottom plot, seem to have been decaying, while the lower energy electrons, the upper plot, seem to have been increasing. And interestingly, as a result of some of these C flares, we seem to have a hint of a proton event in the proton data. The rural zones both above the Arctic and the Antarctic seem to be far more active than they have been for several days. We can see this in the KP index, which has been varying between 2 and 3, which is at a much higher level than it has been recently. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the C1 level, the sunspot number has increased to 139, the radio sun intensity has increased to 115 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is at 365 kilometers per second, but with a density of much less than 1, and the geospace conditions are still rated as quiet. As a result of the activity, I've upgraded my forecast, with C flares being very likely. The chance of M flares is good. There's even a possibility of getting an X flare now. The sunspot number should remain high. CMEs are likely. The solar wind speed should go higher, but a geomagnetic storm is unlikely in the next 24 hours. From the composite coronal image, we can see that the uh, big region in the northeast is due back in a couple of days' time. But interestingly, there is a small bright region that's appeared in the southern hemisphere about the same number of days out, but relatively close to the equator. This seems awfully early in the cycle to be getting regions to emerge that close to the equator, which is normally something that happens towards the end of the cycle. So that should be interesting to see when that comes over the limb, if that is indeed anything substantial. The answer to today's trivia question is Buckminster Fullerene was the discovery that led to the Nobel Prize. It is a molecule made up of 60 carbon atoms in the form of a series of hexagons. It was named after Buckminster Fuller, who was the inventor of the geodesic dome. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.